While most people were distracted by China's release of new flavors of AI, something even bigger was happening behind the scenes. China's East Experimental Fusion Reactor ran at temperatures six times hotter than the core of the sun, and it did so for a full 18 minutes, which is double its previous record. Well, who cares, right? Actually, you do. Because as more and more people realize that the whole green energy push isn't all it's cracked up to be, it's still a fact that we could use some better sources of energy. And sure, fusion reactors could provide clean, unlimited energy for everybody, but that's not the most interesting part. The most interesting part is the curious link between AI and fusion and what it actually says about the current state of our science and technology. Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. If you didn't hear about China's fusion reactor and its fabulous accomplishment, uh, don't worry, you're not alone. It seems everyone is distracted by things like Elon Musk's rockets being caught landing vertically by a giant claw, uh, the wonderful promises of how great AI is going to be and how it's going to change our life. Right. Meanwhile, real scientific and technological advancements that could actually revolutionize all of our lives get kind of lost in the news cycle. But first of all, what exactly is fusion? Well, we already have nuclear reactors, and those nuclear reactors run on something called fission, not fusion. Fission is when the nucleus of an atom is split into two or more smaller nuclei, often releasing huge amounts of energy. And that's great, except it also produces massive amounts of spent radioactive nuclear fuel that has to be stored for a really long time until it becomes non-radioactive. That's not so good. Nuclear fusion, however, is different. Fusion is when two or more lighter atomic nuclei are fused together. This can also produce massive amounts of energy, several times more energy than fission. And if done right, fusion, which is what powers the sun, will produce literally zero radioactive waste, which is pretty cool. But hang on a minute, doesn't fusion still require fuel for the reactor? Yeah, it does, but fusion has a key difference. While current fission reactors need radioactive heavy elements to split, fusion can be done with lighter hydrogen isotopes. An isotope is some chemical element with extra neutrons in the nucleus. So, same chemical element, just kind of like a different flavor of it. What that means in plain English is that fusion reactors, as they stand today, need two types of fuel, usually deuterium and tritium. Deuterium, as it happens, can be produced easily from plentiful seawater. And tritium, the second one, that one's a little more rare. But the nifty thing is that modern fusion reactors are actually producing their own tritium. So if you have a bunch of water and a little technology, you got one fuel and the reactor will itself produce the other one, so boom. Water plus tech equals infinite power. Cool. But it's not just the Chinese who are working on nuclear fusion. Most experimental fusion reactors are known as tokamaks, which comes from the Russian words for toroidal chamber with magnetic coils. Now, it isn't easy to fuse two light atomic nuclei together. You need very high temperatures, you need very high pressures, and of course it produces a whole lot of heat. In any case, at high temperatures, the fuel for the reactors becomes the so-called fourth state of matter, plasma. Luckily, plasma is electrically charged and therefore reacts to magnetic and electric fields. So the core idea of the tokamak is to create a very high temperature ring of plasma inside the reactor that literally floats in the center, confined by powerful magnetic fields. If the plasma ring wasn't confined to the center of the donut-shaped reactor, uh, you'd have a big problem because the temperature of the plasma needs to be at least three times hotter than the core of the sun. Uh, so if the plasma touches the walls of the reactor, it's gonna melt and bad things are gonna happen. But under just the right conditions, the two fuels will fuse together and tons and tons of energy will be released several times more energy than fission reactors can produce. From the heat released, we can then capture it, just as we do with a modern nuclear reactor, and convert that into usable electricity. And Bob's your uncle. 
Since the 1950s, many countries have actually been working on nuclear fusion, including the US, the UK, Japan, Russia, China, India, Argentina, most of the rest of Europe, and a whole bunch of other countries. China's current research actually ties into the ITER project, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor Project. ITER is an international tokamak reactor that is being built in France, and it's scheduled to go live in 2026. Uh, i.e. next year. It will produce 10 times more energy than the electricity that goes into it to actually start the fusion reaction. This is considered a major milestone. So yeah, forget about windmills and solar panels. I mean, sure, in certain cases they have their place. But obviously the future of so-called green energy is actual green energy in the form of the power of the sun inside a donut of all things. But what about safety? I mean, we've already had nuclear plant meltdowns and fusion is hotter than the sun, so safety is kind of a concern, right? It turns out that fusion should actually be safer than current nuclear reactors. First of all, fusion produces very little and very short-lived radioactive waste. And it also produces effectively no pollution. Plus, it's actually difficult to get a fusion reaction to happen in the first place whereas fission can happen almost spontaneously with heavy radioactive elements. So meltdowns are pretty much never going to happen. Okay, so that all sounds great. In fact, it sounds kind of too good to be true. So what's the catch? Well, it's time to get serious. As it happens, even if ITER succeeds, it will be another 25 years before they begin building a fusion power reactor that is capable of producing electricity. So it might be another 25 years after that before we actually have practical commercial fusion reactors powering our homes. In other words, it will take most likely over 125 years from when research on fusion first began in the mid-50s before we'll actually have a functioning reactor. 125 years? Really? Well, consider that the first internal combustion engine vehicle was created about 217 years ago, and we're still using them. Yet computer technology has increased by leaps and bounds in just a few decades. I think we have a problem here. And you could say, well, obviously it's, it's big oil, right? Big oil doesn't want fusion because then they lose all kinds of money. But hang on a minute. Watch my earlier video on what we lose if we stop using fossil fuels tomorrow. Petroleum distillation is actually not responsible just for the fuel that you put in your car, but it's also used to make pretty much every type of plastic. Uh, it's used to make the chair you're sitting on, the clothes you're wearing, the electronics you use every day. Literally everything comes from petroleum distillates. Then we have Elon Musk who's saying, we're going to colonize Mars. And you're going... Hang on a minute, why would big oil executives be worried about losing money when even if all your cars aren't powered by oil anymore, say they're powered by fusion? Well, if I'm a businessman and we colonize Mars, and heck, let's throw the moon in for good measure, right? I'm not selling my oil-based products to just one planet filled with people, but possibly two planets and a moon all filled with people. I mean, the business opportunities are crazy, right? So somehow I doubt that oil is the problem. Maybe the problem is more along the lines of who is directing technology and how it is being directed. We spent billions of dollars on 5G and the Internet of Things. 5G was kind of a dud, we didn't really need it, and the Internet of Things literally never happened. And yet all we heard was hype about how great this was going to be, and billions of dollars were poured into it. Then it was cryptos and the blockchain. All you heard about was cryptos, 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 blockchain, 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 gonna revolutionize everything, billions of dollars and all this energy thrown into it. And what came of it? Well, the price of Bitcoin is kind of high, but everything else pretty much never happened. And now we have AI. AI is going to revolutionize everything. And once again, billions and billions of dollars are being poured into it. And then what happens? We wake up one day and China has released DeepSeek. Oops. They made a better AI with 22 times less manpower and over 111 times less money. 
Given all that, I think maybe it's time to devote more energy and brain power and money to things like fusion instead of profitable buzzwords like the Internet of Things or artificial intelligence. Because frankly, how much more data does big data really need from us? And don't get me wrong, many of our current technological wonders, they really are impressive feats of engineering. Even AI is useful for certain things, but it isn't the jaw-dropping advancement that CEOs and the media are making it out to be. It does make a lot of money for a very small number of people, though. But from the fusion results that we've had so far, it's obvious that we as a species are capable of so much more in terms of technological advancement. I mean, a tokamak is like something out of an episode of Star Trek, for crying out loud. Maybe it would be better to stop trying to recreate scenes of rockets from a 70-year-old comic book and start thinking truly big and outside the box. First, create plentiful clean energy, and then you may not even need chemical rockets to get to Mars or wherever. First create the plentiful energy, and then we don't have to worry about crappy EVs because we'll have fusion-powered electric vehicles and everybody will be happy. And maybe fusion isn't even the answer, but a step towards something even better that we'll never find if we're not allowed to even look. Maybe the reason fusion is taking so long is because our understanding of science is artificially limited by both greed and what has basically become scientific dogma. Technology is powered by science, and science has become a religion to believe in, and how dare you if you question it. That's definitely the wrong path. Until the actual well-being of humanity at large is considered, until science and engineers who think big, wild thoughts are heard and funded instead of instantly ridiculed, I don't think we'll get very far very fast. But maybe our inability to make huge advances in technology is the whole point of this insane controlled mess that we call science and technology. I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.